Hey everybody, it's Marcus back here with another VOD and Tips video. This week we're going to have a really quick tip video looking at how we can use renders in the VOD and Grid for customizing how different cells are shown and to add a details row. So let's jump into code and see how we can do this. All right, so the base of my application is a single view with a grid. The grid is nothing special, so I just have a grid hooked up to a array of people. And then I've defined some Vaadin grids that are sortable, so using the Vaadin grid sort column that are mapped to the paths on the person object. And we populate the person array by calling our backend using the typed fusion endpoint in the connected callback, and we have a little bit of CSS. So the thing I want to do here is, first of all, I want to show you how we can customize the cell of an individual column. So how, how can we, for instance, turn this email into a clickable link? And then I want to show how we can make these uh, rows selectable so that we can show a row details view. The way we accomplish both of these is through something called renders. So let's start out with the email here and define a renderer. The renderer is a function, this dot email renderer, like that. Now, if we take a look at what this renderer is, you can see it's a grid body renderer. And a grid body renderer has, is a function that takes in three parameters. So let's copy that go into our people view and define this email render. And then I'll paste these in here. And what we'll do is we'll automatically import these using our ID. And what we then need to do is essentially render whatever we want into this root using information from this model. So a voting grid uses the item itself, so the person object, as the kind of model uh, for each row. So that's something that's very helpful because we can then pull the information we need from there. And the root here, the element, is essentially the element that's going to get rendered in this cell. So here uh, we're going to use a render method from the lit HTML library. So essentially the same thing as let element uses internally, but we're going to define our own render method here. So we're going to import that. And this takes in two things. So it'll take in a HTML template like that, and then where we want to render that, which will be this root like that. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to have an a tag with a mail to link, which uses the person's email address. Now, how do we get the person? Well, like I said, this model here will contain that information for us. So we can actually, let's make this easy for us and define a constant called person and have that be equal to model.item as a person. So we can cast that as a person because we know in this case, it's always a person. All right, so we're gonna mail to person.email and then we'll display the email here also. So again, person.email, like that. This column we don't need, and you see it's highlighted in yellow here, so it's going to give us a compiler warning. We can avoid that by just giving it a underscore name signaling to TypeScript compiler, like we, we know this is unused and we don't care about that. All right, so let's save that and see where we are. You can see now we have these emails as mail to links, which will allow us to then uh, go ahead and, and click on those if we want to email somebody. All right, so next thing, how do we make these rows selectable so that we can show some additional details? Again, we're going to use a render, this time on the grid itself. So you can see we already have items defined here, and what we're going to use here is a row details render. And again, this is going to be mapped to a, a function. So this dot row details renderer, renderer, like that. And again, if we click in here and see what we need, it needs to be a grid row details renderer, which has this signature. 
So again, let's copy that and create this row details render. Row details renderer. Paste that. And here we need to import the grid element. And you can see it's almost the same here. So we have the HTML element, we have the item model, but here we have a handle to the grid instead of to the column. So this is grid specific. Again, we're going to pull out the person from that model, and then we're going to use the render to render some HTML into that root node. Again, we're not going to need the grid for anything, so we can take that out. And here I'm just going to do something simple. So let's say details for, and then we're going to pull some info from this person. So person dot first name and person dot last name like that. All right, so let's save that. And even though we defined it, nothing happens. So we still need to tell the grid how to deal with selections and how it should or rather which rows it should show details for. So for that, let's listen for an event on our grid. So on active item change, changed rather, we should call a method. So this dot toggle details, and then we'll go ahead and implement that. So let's go down here, toggle details, takes in an event, which is a custom event. And here, what we'll get is essentially the events detail will contain the selected item, which is essentially a person, or null if that item was deselected. So, so again, let's do const person is equal to e dot detail dot value as a person. And then I want to store the selected person, essentially, which rows do we want to have open, and I'm, I'm going to display them in two ways. So I'm going to open the row details and also show it as selected. So let's create another internal property here to track that state, internal property, and we're going to use this as a private uh, selected, let's call this selected items, because that's the wording that the grid uses. And this is also going to be a person array that starts out as empty. So we don't have anything selected from before. Then we can bind this selected items to our grid. So selected items should be equal to this, uh, this dot selected items, and also uh, details opened items. So this is this determines which rows will have their details uh, views opened. Again, we're going to use the same uh, selected items for this. All right, and then the final thing now that we have this property selected items is to actually set it. So let's clear this up a little bit. So this dot selected items is equal to and then we check if we have if the person is set, then we'll put this as a single person array like that. If not, we'll set it to an empty array, essentially clearing out whatever selection we had. All right, save it. Let's see where we are. We can now select a row. And you can see we have some details here for that person. And there you have it. That's how we can use renders in a voting grid to either customize cell content or show details for a selected row. I hope that was helpful for you. So be sure to subscribe to our channel for weekly new videos, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.